But to bring in an insect, biological warfare, when people get right in the back of the yard that they use for home use, it's crazy. As a former county council member, I am very disturbed that government agencies are going to do all this in spite of the huge public outcry against it. Uh, we had a really great meeting tonight. Um, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we provide an avenue for the people uh, to, to um, express their concerns in regard to this proposal by USDA um, Forestry uh, Division in regarding to releasing this um, Brazilian insect. And uh, obviously tonight was a great opportunity for, for people to hear the other side and more importantly hear from people that are recreational users of the forest, people that utilize uh, the Vivi um, uh, for personal reasons. And uh, I thought it was a great discussion. Well, I think uh, with the Vivi, I think uh, it's been noted it's been here for over 100 years. So it's been part of, I think, part of our culture. Uh, some people, uh, Hawaiian ancient ancestries have expressed how it's been part of their culture and people have expressed how the people use it in terms of burning woods. Gentlemen talk about using it as a, a stick for a hoe and, and, and so forth but you know it, it's, it's a food source. I think we can all agree that strawberry guava is in the forest and it is spreading. We all know that it's got lots of fruits, we all know it's got lots of seeds and it's spread around very quickly. They are replacing native plants over vast landscapes. We're talking hundreds of thousands of acres. And this means loss of native plants. And that's another reason why this um, sort of rash uh, study was undertaken to look at a biocontrol. Brazil is where the, this plant originates from. Uh, at least that's as far as we know in modern times. This is where it's been found. And there are insects in Brazil that attack this, this tree, which is Tectococcus. When you bring in insect A, Tectococcus, to attack the strawberry guava, What's going to control it? It's going to go to town on the strawberry guava. Their populations will explode. That's a common thing in biocontrol. You can read this on the internet. It's, it's a controversial thing, biocontrol. It causes problems. There are, there are some success stories, but there are a lot of failures and nightmares that this has caused. As a physician, I'm extremely concerned about the release of a biological agent which may well cause mass destruction of plants on private land. We still use this. This is Hawaii. This is not the mainland. And you know, one of the things that we need to be very careful about is, is, is we need to make sure that we are looking forward towards food sustainability. And I think that's one of the biggest things that people are concerned about. Um, I had a, a guava farmer actually come to me personally. He said, Dominic, can someone guarantee me that this insect will not attack my livelihood, which is to produce guava? Will the government be financially, legally liable if I lose my livelihood? And will they pay me? Will they, you know, what guarantees that I have? Unless someone can guarantee that farmer that it will not harm your crop, it's a risky, it's a risky thing. And I think we need to really take that into consideration. These insects are going to be unstoppable, and the government has the audacity to tell us to spray pesticide to kill the insect that they're releasing, or bulldoze. And they're not offering to give you any money to do this. So this is called, actually, it's like an eminent domain takeover, a taking of our vivi on our property without compensation, which is illegal. They haven't calculated that. We were told how cheap biocontrol is. It's, it's expensive to go in and manually remove. It's cheap to release a bug, let them do all the work. That's actually a lie because they're gonna be monitoring, monitoring, not controlling, but watching this spread across the island for the next three decades. The guys proposing this have a grant in mind that's coming down. They, these are long-term projects. They've already spent millions. This has been going on since 1993. They've been looking at Tectococcus, 15 years. They're ready to release it, and suddenly the public gets wind of it and says, stop! And all that money, all that time, all that effort, these scientists see going down the drain with their careers, because they are entomologists, they study insects. Biocontrol with insects is their job, it's their passion, it's their livelihood. And when we stop them, they're thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? Am I going to move to Oregon? I mean, what am I going to do? I have a grant, I have a whole bunch of concerns for my family. These people have a conflict of interest because they're not looking at alternative methods. They're looking at biocontrol, and biocontrol is really what's on trial here. And one perfect example is um, mongoose and the rat. Mongoose, daytime, rat, nighttime. 
And if, and if it just so happens they, they get a chance to leave, the Mongols look at the rest, the rest look at the Mongols, and guess what happens? They go opposite ways. <laughs> How do you explain that? Look at the banana polka. The bug that was released to kill the banana polka is now in our backyards killing our lily koi. It looks like we never learned a damn thing from the past. There's a lot of uh, mistrust out there, and I think it was evident tonight. And uh, some way, somehow, we need to get the scientific community and the public together to really understand and, and work together, really, to address this issue. I'd like to say that we are going to hold public listening sessions, and I'm going to call them that because we'd like to, to spend just a few minutes trying to clarify some of the, the misconceptions with this insect but then spending the majority of time listening to you and collecting comments. I respectfully request that our government officials will listen to us and not release the scale insect. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you.